Hi, my name is Paul from Physics Hi, and today I'm going to be answering the question, what type of graph do you choose? So although my name is Physics Hi, this particular video will be applicable to any of the sciences that you do. So stay tuned. Now, in many types of science experiments, we're interested in looking at relationships between two sets of data. You're changing one and measuring something that it changes as a result of you changing that particular data. Now, we refer to that as our independent variable and our dependent variable. You control the independent variable and change it, and then you measure the dependent variable as a result. And then you collect that data and then put it in a table. And then what you do is you draw a graph. But the question is, is which type of graph do you want to draw? And that is basically answered by the type of variables that you're dealing with. So before we talk about the type of graphs that we need to draw, let's quickly review the types of variables that you're going to be encountering. Variables, whether we're talking about independent or dependent types of variables, can be divided up into two subsets. The first is what we refer to as categorical. In other words, it has a category, it has a sort of name or a grouping associated with it. The second one is obviously numerical, that is, it's associated by a number. Now we can divide both of those into two smaller subsets. And the first one, in terms of categorical, is the fact that it could be called nominal. In other words, it has a name associated with it, and the order doesn't really matter. The second one is what we refer to as ordinal, which means the order is important. When we talk about numerical types of information, then you can divide that up into what we refer to as discrete, which means it has set values, or continuous, which means it can be any sort of value from A to B and anything in between. Now, to explain those different types of variables, the best way to discuss this is to look at some data and ask the question what type of data it is, and then address, well, what type of graph do I use to talk about that graph? So let's start. So here we have our first set of data. I have an experiment, my independent variable is I've got different types of balls and I'm going to measure the height at which they bounce off, let's say from a set particular height. Now this is what we refer to as a categorical type of data because we have the different types of balls as a category, but because they have names associated with them, then we say this is not only categorical, but also nominal. Now, how do we graph that? Well, I'm interested in graphing two things here. I'm interested in graphing the ball, in this case, those types of balls, versus their average height in meters. Now, by the way, I'm going to use Excel here to establish those graphs. Obviously, you could do this by hand. I'm not going to go into the details of how to use Excel. There's lots of um, tutorials online that you can have a look at. What I'm here interested in is how to represent the data. Now the type of graph here is important. Because of the fact that you can't have anything in between, you don't need to have anything, for example, to connect the two between one and the other. In other words, you can't get an in-between tennis ball and a golf ball. So a bar graph is appropriate. So I'm gonna choose the first column and my final column, and I'm gonna insert a chart, and I'm gonna choose a bar graph. Now in Excel, a bar graph can also be described as a column graph. Why I've done it this way is we always place the independent variable on our x-axis and our dependent variable on our y-axis. And that's what I've got here. Now I can add labels and so forth. But what's important here is we have clear, discrete values. And the order, tennis, golf, basketball, squash, well, that's not really important. I'm just simply comparing one against the other. So in the case of a categorical nominal type of data, a bar graph is appropriate, making sure you put the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. In my next type of graph, I have now here data that isn't really looking at an independent versus dependent type of situation, but I show it to show you where the ordinal aspect of the categorical type of variables is important. So here I have a set of 65 students and their exam mark. Now, I want to basically see what the results are over a stat from the range that we have. And so in this case, the order is important. I want to see where the lower performing students are and where the higher performing students are. So what I do here is I select, in this case, my column of my data that I want. And in this case, I'm going to insert a histogram. 
Now a histogram allows me to see basically in this case the numbers of students for a particular category but the order is important. You will see here that this says that the lowest mark is 16.2 and there I've got a grouping, I've got five groupings here. Now I can change that, again I encourage you to learn how to use Excel in this case but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an overflow bin which basically says okay just group all the students who are over 80. I have an underflow bin, group all the students who are under 20 and then in between I want another set of three groupings. So in other words I have a total of five groupings and when I do that I get a graph that looks like this. Now you can see it's now divided up from 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60 and so forth. And you can see my vast number of students have performed roughly in the middle section. So that's basically categorical information where the order becomes important. Let's now move on to something that you're going to come across far more often when you're doing independent versus dependent types of analysis. So the first one here is a case where we have where discrete values are important. Now I'm going to specifically refer to a very specific physics concept here because this is important in terms of discrete values. Now here I am talking about the results of, okay, I've got photons, let's say a very good, fine, sensitive experiment. I can fire photons, individual packets of light, and I can hit them on a sensor and work out their energy. It really isn't important if you don't have an understanding of photons and energy in terms of electron volts, which is what, what this graph is all about. It's really about understanding what the graph looks like. So I have a number of photons here, and let's say I've got from 1 to 11, and then I've got the, the total energy that I get. And then what I do is I graph that. Well, let's first what we would commonly do in this situation. So I'm going to go to format, I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to insert a chart. And in this case, I'm going to look at a scatter graph. That is, I look at the relationship as a trend. And now I can even add a lovely trend line to this situation by just adding the trend line like this, and I get a lovely trend line. Now, what is the problem with this particular graph? Well, photons are discrete amounts. You can get one photon, you can get two photons, but you cannot get one and a half photons. That is a physical impossibility. And the problems with our graphs here is normally what we can do is interpolate, which is we can predict values between two sets of values. So in this case, if I were to look at, let's say this data point right here between this line and this line here, you can say, well, that's six, that's um, seven, and I can predict, for example, what the value would be for six and a half photons. But that's not possible. You can't have six and a half photons. And so in this case, this is inappropriate because my data is discrete. It can only have specific values. So a line graph in this case is not appropriate. So what I need to do is I'm going to change the chart type into a column graph. And I'm going to do a column graph that looks like this. Now I still have a trend, that's not a problem. I still have a trend line, but now I'm making it absolutely clear you can't have values in between. So a bar graph is appropriate where the data is discrete. It has set values. So now let's have a look at another situation. Now in this case, it looks like I still have discrete data. That is, in this case, I'm looking at the relationships about the number of people on the bus and how that affects the acceleration of the bus. And clearly, as I have more passengers on the bus, I'm going to have an acceleration that is a bit le uh, lower as we go along. And so you would say, well, I can have one adult, I can have two adults, but you can't have one and a half adults. And so in this case, the number of adults is discrete data, and I could do a column graph based on this. But the problem here is, is this, is that actually the relationship that we established here is not about the number of people, although there is a relationship between the number of people and the acceleration of the bus. The fact it is, this is actually all about the mass. Although I can have one or two, but not one and a half people on the bus, the fact is it's about their mass. So I have 90 kilograms, one person, 180 kilograms, two people. I actually can have something in between. So let's say 135 kilograms in between. So what we want to do here is the better thing to do, if we want to look at the relationship between the case in our independent variable, the number of people on the bus, what we really want to do is talk about their mass. And so what I have here now is a similar table, but in this case, I've converted the number of people on the bus into mass of the bus. So now what we have is clearly continuous data. 
So in other words, it's a numerical type of data, but it's continuous because I can have values anywhere in between two certain values. And so now when I graph this, I don't want a bar graph because that's discrete. What I want in this case is what we refer to as a line graph that establishes as a, some sort of relationship that can be drawn with a line. So again, I'm going to choose my data and I'm going to, in this case, in choose, if you're using Excel, what we refer to as a XY scatter. Now, in this case, my XY scatter is squeezed for example, over to one side because everything is from 10,000 kilograms upwards, that's fine. But now what we have here is clearly a relationship. And then what you do is you draw a line. Now, if it is a linear line, that is if it's a straight line, you can draw the line that fits best the data. In this case, it's not a straight line and it is in actual fact an inverse relationship. So your line of best fit, so to speak, is actually a trend line. And in this case, the trend line is going to look something like this. You can see this lovely curve here and it's actually a relationship of an inverse relationship or let's say in this case um, to the minus one. And so that's our trend line. But the point here again is that in this point right there where I've got my arrow pointing here is that even though I've got no data listed there, I can use that line to predict. So for example, if that line, it's 12,000 kilogram, I can then read across and then work out what the acceleration will be for that situation. It's totally appropriate. And of course, that's referred to as interpolating. And the beauty, of course, is that if I extend that line, I can also make predictions beyond that as well. And that's called extrapolating. So now let's quickly summarize what we've discussed. We have, of course, four different types of data that can be broken up into categorical or numerical. When we look at categorical, we have what we refer to as nominal. In other words, they have names associated with them. In that case, a bar graph is the most appropriate type of graph to use. If it's ordinal, so we have these groupings, but the order becomes important, then a histogram becomes appropriate. Now, if you're looking at numerical data, they can be discrete or continuous. If it's discrete, again, it can be only specific set values. Again, a bar graph is the most appropriate type of graph. And then finally, we have continuous data where you are finding that you have any value that is possible. And in this case, what we have is a line graph, which is based on a scatter plot. I hope that this helped you understand the nature of the variables that you encounter in science and the types of graphs that you draw. Please like, share and subscribe, hit the bell so that you get my latest updates. Put a comment down below if this has been particularly helpful for you and maybe consider supporting me via Patreon or with a one-off donation via PayPal. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.